Hello everybody, my name is James and today we're going to look into another programming paradigm called object-oriented programming, chapter 27 of A-level computer science. And these are, this is the chapter outlined and the stuff that we'll be learning about. Now let's look into the concept of OOP, object-oriented programming. There are two stuff you need to know. First, the re concept of record, which is something we already talked about in chapter 26 where it is a user-defined data type that has many other different data in it. And also subroutine, which is basically function in Python programming language. Now, to create a class, um, you first need to understand what is the purpose of the class. A class is a blueprint for an object. And it groups together the data structure and the subroutine that operate on the data. So first, part of the class, you have the attributes which is also the data. And attributes are referred to as private because you can't just access them, you need a set getter, which will be explaining what it is later. And methods defines its behavior. What can these products, okay, so these objects do? And encapsulation is then maintained by accessing attributes only through the method. So if I have a product class here. What it means here is that even though you can, you have a few attributes called name, price, quantity for the product, you can only access the data using methods, which is something that we'll learn in a while. And in, to instantiate a product, this is something we also learned in chapter 26. Um, this is how we instantiate it. We give a value to it. And OOP enhances data protection through encapsulation because you just cannot access it directly and restricting access to the attributes. It promotes modularity, code reusability, and easier maintaining. And I'm going to give you um, an example to design a class from scratch. How do we do that? When you're designing a class, you need to first identify what are the attributes that is needed and the methods that will be operated in this class. So let's say I want to create a product class. The attributes, the data I need to have are something like that. And the functions would be something like that. And functions in a class usually involve the getters, a method that retrieves the value of an attribute, the setter, a method that modifies the value of an attribute, and the constructor, a special method used for initializing an object attributes upon instantiation. So let me show you how it's, how it's going to work. So in Python, um, when you're creating a class, this is how you do it. You write class and then the name of the class followed by the constructor. This part dot in it is what we call a constructor. It will initialize the values of the attributes by taking in arguments and followed by the methods. And depending on the number of attributes you have, you will have different number of getters. And you can also have setter methods. Do know that I only have two setter methods here. And this is another good way of enhancing data security in a class because if you don't have a setter for that attribute, it basically means that the attribute cannot be set by outsiders using your class. And lastly, you can also have methods used to display information. And one additional note is that I put two underscore here to signify that this attribute is private, meaning you cannot access it directly. Now, Python code to create an instance of a product class. So this is the product class instantiation and how we can get the attribute value by calling the getter method. This is how I do it. Dot get whatever it is. And do note that these functions are what have been defined. When you do get manufacturer date, it will return the value of the attribute. Because this is exactly what I'm doing. And when you're setting value, this is how you do it too. So to show you how to do it in code, I have created a product class with its getter and its met setter and also the constructor. So an additional method. So let's run this code. Nothing happened because I haven't instantiated my product. And this is when I instantiate it and then I print out the product details of it and also set a different value. So now let's run this. You can see that this is the initial detail of the product. But once I set price to 1000 and set quantity to 10, 
the updated info become thousand dollar and ten quantity. Uh, I got this information because I'm called the display info function. It is as simple as that. And of course, it can be used for many items. You can even use um, class to create like a student object or a library object, which we'll see in a while. Now, this is how we declare the product class using properties. So by the way, the other way to create class is to use the property method here. Do note that in using by using the property, you do not need the get and the set thing. And because by using the decorator property, Python will know that this is a getter for the attribute. In fact, they'll create it for you automatically. For setter, you just need to put the property dot setter. Now, that's how you can create a class, instantiate a class. Let's look into some principles that are in OOP. So the first one is called inheritance. It allows new classes to reuse and extend the functionality of existing class, the parent class. And this simplifies code maintenance, promote code reusability, and facilitate the creation of hierarchical relationships. So let me give you an example to explain what I mean. We have created a product class, but products can be categorized into many different types like electronic products, grocery products, and these products have different characteristics. And that's how a subclass can be created. So this is the product class, the base class. We can create a subclass by just using the same class um, syntax, but inside a the parenthesis here, I'm going to put in the base class that I want to follow. And it will call, this base class will then call the constructor and method of the base class. And in this case, every single attribute that the product class has, the electronic product will also have it. That's when the inheritance part of the code comes in. The subclass will inherit all the attributes and methods of the base class. So if I do to create another subclass, grocery product, you can see that I, I can now categorize product into electronic and grocery. And electronic product has an additional attribute called warranty period. And grocery product has an additional attribute called expiration date. And that's the beauty of inheritance in OOP. You are reusing everything in product by creating a subclass. So you can instantiate the subclass using the same method. In fact, I have already included the code here. This is my base class. And then I can create a subclass by putting the product class into the parenthesis of this subclass and call super parenthesis dot init. So this will call the instance constructor in the parent class, which means that electronic product will also have the name and price attribute. Same goes to grocery products. And then it has its own attribute that is outside of this parent class. So think about it from um, a human point of view. When you are the children of your parents, you inherit certain characteristics like their surnames, but you also have your own unique characteristic that your parents don't have. So that's the concept of inheritance. In this case, electronic product has the warranty period attribute, but its parent doesn't have it. So this is how I create an instance of it, and I can display its information. So let's run this code. You can see this is the code for electronic and grocery products. So that's how you instantiate a subclass. So polymorphism is another principle beside inheritance. It is a core concept in object-oriented programming that allows objects of different classes to be treated as common of a common superclass. The essence of it is that it enables methods in a superclass, which is the parent class, to be implemented in different ways by its subclasses. Let me give you an example. This is one method in the product class. An electronic device inherit the product class. So it can also have its own display info method. So that's when the bolt would enable methods in a superclass to be implemented in a different way. So this is how the display, display info method is implemented in a base class. And this is how it is implemented in a subclass. It has an additional line called warranty period, how many months. So even though they inherit stuff from the base class, they, c they are free to modify how methods can work. And this subclass can even have its own method 
that the base class doesn't have. So the base method class class method will be called first, and then its own code will run. So that's polymorphism. So you can read the definition one more time to make sure you understand it. And that's the two concepts that are very, very important in OOP and also what makes OOP so effective, inheritance and polymorphism. <laughs> now, the next last two part, memory leakage. So it can occur when a program fails to release memory it no longer needs, leading to inefficient memory usage and potentially causing the program to slow down. So Python memory management, including garbage collection, ensure that memory allocated on a heap for pro objects is automatically released when those objects are no longer referenced, preventing memory leakage. So that's just a knowledge you need to know about how Python uses garbage collection to handle memory leakage. Last but not least, another principle is containment. It refers to a relationship between two objects when one object is included in another object. So for example, I can create two class, one books, the other one library, and the book class can be inside the library class. An example of it is like that. I have a class, I create a class called book. It has its attribute, constructor, and method, and also a class called librarian. It has its name and how it can greet the person. And a library, which is what showcase containment actually, it takes in a librarian, which is another class, so class can be here. And it also have methods to add books books, which is another object. So in other words, we have objects inside an object. In this case, books and librarians are objects that are inside the library objects. And this is the code. So let's show, let me showcase to you how it works. The same class here. And I can initiate a librarian Alice and put this librarian into the library class, which is um, what the constructor need in the library class and add books. That's again, I put in, this is another constructor for book and then I put this book into the library. And if I were to run this code, you can see that that's how um, one class is in another class. Welcome to the library, I'm Alice, your librarian. And that showcase containment. And that's about it for object-oriented programming. Let me know what types of video you wanna see and I'll try to make them when I have time. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.